What's going on guys? So welcome back to my laundry room. This is the six month follow up on this brand new GE washer and dryer set that we purchased, well, I guess six months ago, so they're not brand new anymore. Anyways, a lot of people actually watched that video. A lot of folks that were interested in buying these units. Now I know that's kind of off topic to what my channel is normally about, but it's still kind of on topic in a way because people have to do their laundry, whether you are gonna go on an RV trip and you bring it all back, or you're gonna prepare for an RV trip, or shoot, you just need to do your laundry. So a lot of people watched that video and people told me that they got their unit because of that video. So I wanted to give you all kind of a long-term evaluation of how they've been working for us. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, again, so we got these about six months ago and I can tell you that overall, we've been incredibly happy with them. What I can also tell you is that when we first got them, the first big issue that we ran into was the pedestals. So the pedestals are taller than your traditional pedestals. They're about three inches taller, actually closer to four inches taller than the ones that we used with our Samsung. And the problem there is we actually had to modify the bottom of our cabinets. We had to cut out about an inch and a half of trim off the bottom of our cabinets to even fit these in here with enough clearance above them to prevent them from rattling or potentially making contact if this starts moving during its spin cycle. That was a big bummer, but it was a lot easier than having to remove the cabinets and lift the cabinets higher. We simply had to cut, like I said, about an inch and a half off of the bottom of the cabinet area. Not a big deal. Definitely worth it to get these to fit in here. Now, the big perk about this GE Ultra Fresh system is the fact that it has this vent on the front. So this vent is designed to draw in air from the laundry room whenever you're done with your laundry loads and your cycles and you want to clear out any moisture that accumulates in the seal here. So traditionally, if you have a front loader washer and dryer, you would have to leave your door propped open to prevent water from turning into mold or mildew or forming any bacteria on the seal right there. That's a big deal, and it can be a bigger deal if it starts spreading into your clothing, and your clothing and your towels, your comforters, sheets like that all start smelling like mildew because it's accumulating in the seal. Cleaning that out isn't that difficult, but it's something that you have to do, and it's a process that a lot of people just don't do. So you have to keep your door open. You also have to drain a little water reservoir that builds up down at the bottom, and that's water that's gotten into the system that drains out. You wanna clear that out regardless. But this system is really cool because that ultra fresh vent has worked great. The clothes coming out of this have never smelled better and I am not even kidding you. That is a huge, huge plus. And that alone made it worth paying such a high price for these units. These units were right at $1,000 a piece. I think 950 because of a promo that Lowe's had. But they are pricey. They are very large capacity. This is like five cubic foot capacity, which makes it among the largest, especially without having to go to an extra wide model. They're pretty wide, so keep that in mind. I think your traditional unit's about 29 inches wide. These are about 30 inches wide, so you do need the width to be able to put both of them in here, as well as the ability to give yourself a little space in between and on the ends to prevent your rinse cycle or your spin cycle from shaking and possibly hitting things. They do shake, or at least the washer does shake during a spin cycle. Sometimes it shakes more than I think it should, but when I compare it to the Samsung and the LG units that we had before, it doesn't seem as if it's any worse or any better than those units. So it does an adequate job. And I can imagine the difficulty if you've ever lifted up a soaked towel and you wanna wring it out, you can tell how heavy it is. When you have four or five towels in there and other things Things, you know that's a lot of weight moving around so it has to balance it out and it does a pretty good job of doing it I'm not gonna say it does the best job but it certainly does a good job now some other features that we really like about this unit one big one is this really cool smart dispense system right here this is the ability for you to put whatever detergent you use most in here and the system will automatically dispense it based on the cycle and based on the need. So the way you'd use that is you'd simply turn the unit on and then you'd press smart dispense right here. And then you can pick if you want less, more, auto, 
or turn the system off, which is really nice. And again, it dispenses from this reservoir. I think it holds up to 50 ounces worth of whatever your favorite detergent is. If you have other types of detergent, let's say you use Dreft or you have children use a certain detergent for babies, infants, children, then you can always manually put that in here, turn off Smart Dispense, and it will pull from the normal reservoir here, which is really cool. Now, something I don't care for on this unit is the fact that it has capacitive touch buttons. What that means is it essentially uses the energy from your body to use a button. What I don't like about that is, is because you barely touch anything and you've triggered a button. So if this is on mid cycle and I'm reaching over to grab something out of the cabinet above, if I brush up against that button, I could turn the unit off and then essentially have to start over from my cycle. And I've done that before. Not a big fan of capacitive buttons. I know it makes it easier to clean the panel because you don't have to worry about seams or any type of area that water can get into it, but not a big fan of it for that one reason. And the dryer's the same way. Now we've only used that smart sink feature where the dryer actually communicates with the washer and based on the load and the cycle you had in the washer, you throw it in the dryer, hit start, and it picks the appropriate cycle for your clothes. It's pretty cool. We don't use it a lot. It's kind of a gimmicky feature to be honest with you. I think most people just naturally pick the cycle they want and hit the play button and leave it at that. But it is a pretty cool feature if you want to automate your laundry process a little bit more. The other nice thing about this system is it gives you a really convenient way to get to a spin only cycle. A lot of people don't know that most washers have that feature, but it's difficult to get to it in some cases. With this one, you're simply gonna turn the unit on. You're gonna put the dial in rinse and spin mode, and then you simply uncheck the extra rinse and it will just go into a spin cycle. So you can drain extra water out of your clothes without having to worry about you know, it filling up with water and then rinsing it out that way. Also like the fact that you can turn the light on at any point. And that gives you the ability either in the middle of a cycle, at the end of a cycle, you know, during a cycle, it doesn't really matter. You can turn the light on or off on either of these units. So that is really cool. Now, an issue we ran into is one that really tested how GE was going to treat us from a customer service perspective. And I can honestly tell you it was a phenomenal experience. Let me tell you what happened. So in the process of washing some clothes, a drawstring of some sort got caught right here. It basically was hanging out of the washer. So when the washer was closed, it pinned that drawstring there. It got pulled inside and it ripped the seal. So the seal right there actually tore. And I contacted GE. I told them exactly what happened. I told them what the problem was, why you know the actual tear occurred and all of that. And they basically said, let's file it as a warranty claim. They sent a technician out. Now, granted, the technician forgot to bring the seal with him the first time, or I guess he thought it was coming here. So we had to reschedule. But a week later, technician came out, replaced this seal at no charge. Now, what's cool about that is this is a $300 seal. This uses new technology. It's called microband technology. You can probably see it right up here. This is essentially a type of material that does not promote the growth of bacteria, mold, fungus, stuff like that on it. So it's not your traditional rubber seal. And they use that microband technology all over. So you even have it up here as well. This is all that microband technology. And this is really cool because normally I don't think another manufacturer would have stepped up like that because we've had issues with other washers and dryers in the past and typically they really want to find out what you did to potentially break it so it seems as if they can give you grief whenever you try to get it fixed. In the case of GE, they said, let's just follow a warranty claim. Let's just get a technician out there to fix it and that's what they did. And again, they have no idea who I am, what my channel is about, how many viewers I have. They don't even know I have a YouTube channel. I went through the normal process. I mean, why would a washer and dryer company even want to work with me considering, you know, my content isn't about their type of product. Now, a correction I want to make off of the first video is I told you that this has a 10 year warranty and we shouldn't have to worry about some of the issues we had with our previous unit, the Samsung unit, because this warranty should cover it. Keep in mind, this warranty does not cover your electronics. It pretty much covers the seal, it covers the tumbler, it covers a lot of the components that move. It just doesn't cover everything. And I thought it did. I should have read more into it. But what's really nice is that GE stepped up to the plate for something that was clearly, you know, customer damage. I 
did something that normally I don't think another manufacturer would have covered under warranty, and they did. So that was awesome. That speaks volumes about their customer service. The other side of the warranty is that you do have like a one or two year warranty that does cover all the other major components of it, like the computer board, you know, the display panel, all this stuff. So if there's an issue there and it's a manufacturer defect, they should step up and cover that. I really am impressed with the performance of these units so far. What I would honestly tell you, and this is something important to keep in mind, is when you are looking at a washer and dryer and you are looking to replace what you have, you want a brand that's reputable. I think everyone, of course, has heard of GE, especially if you've been in the aerospace industry at all because they build a lot of the jet engines that aircraft use. But GE actually has one of the highest reliability rates for their washer and dryers in the industry. I didn't know that. I thought we were taking a risk getting GE units because, you know, it's a great fancy feature to have this. It's great that we're getting this, but hopefully nothing else fails on the unit. But then I started doing more research about their washer and dryers and found out that they are considered some of the most reliable in the industry. So that's really cool. So you're still not finding a lot of reviews on these at this time. And hopefully this review helps you. Now, again, you have to take measurements. If you're going to get the pedestals, you absolutely need to measure how high your clearance is, how wide your clearance is, that you have enough room to put a little bit of space in between these units, and how deep it is as well, because these do protrude out deeper than your traditional washer and dryer. They are larger, so keep that in mind. Oh, one final thing, one issue that we did have. One of our pedestals, our washer pedestal, actually, and I think this one's starting to do it too, when you open it, you hear that noise? The bottom of it kind of bends down a little bit when you load it up with towels or whatever you put in it. And over time, it will start to kind of touch the bottom bracing that goes across. So just keep that in mind. We already had these replaced. They replaced them at no charge under warranty and we're having the problem again. So we may get them replaced again, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. So we'll probably just live with it because it is a big deal to get someone to come in here, especially right now with everything that's going on, pull the unit out, lift the unit off, replace it, bolt it back up, put it back into place. And right now we just don't like a lot of people in our house. So that's something we'll probably live with. That being said, Everything else about these has been working really well. The ultra fresh vent system has been fantastic. It does a great job really, really making the clothes smell good, better than they have ever smelled with any other wash and dryer set that we've had. And that is really cool. Just so you know what type of users we are, uh, we probably do on average 15 loads a week mixed with really heavy loads, some lighter loads, but for the most part, I'd probably say 10 out of the 15 are very heavy loads. We have some family members that are in the healthcare industry, so right now they just do laundry all the time, and we are constantly cycling large loads of towels, comforters, sheets, all sorts of it. You name it, we've probably thrown it in here, and they have performed flawlessly for the past six months. So that's my update on these. I hope you enjoy it. Again, not really related to my normal content, but I know a lot of people wanted to know how these have been performing. They've been performing really, really well. And something that I forgot to mention, if you use the application, the app that you download on your smartphone, whether it's an Android or it's an Apple smartphone, you can get notifications through their app of your current laundry status, how long the cycle has remaining on it when the cycle's done all of that and it works really good and that's a really great thing mainly because if you look at the Samsung units it comes with Bixby and if you don't have a Samsung device with Bixby you can't communicate with them so you're essentially paying for a really smart feature that gives you a lot of flexibility but only works with Samsung smartphones I don't like that I don't think that is a good idea at all why wouldn't you simply make an application with a, an appliance that has nothing to do with your smartphone in reality, why wouldn't you make it compatible with any smartphone from any manufacturer? I just don't understand the logic with that. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel. Hopefully you don't mind this content. I know a lot of people liked it. It's the most viewed video on the GE Ultra Fresh units that I think on YouTube. So apparently some people like it. But if you haven't had a chance again, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.